Hello everyone, today we're gonna to do the Harbor Freight 12 by 36 lathe review. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. I usually do resin art, uh, hybrid stuff, a lot of resin and, and woodwork, and it, most of it ends up here. So if you're interested in that kind of uh, content, Welcome aboard, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, so you don't miss any notifications when I put out new stuff. So now let's begin. If you found this video from a search, I'm gonna assume that you are not turning yet, or you you know someone that turns and you, you wanna do it, you've been watching videos. I did the same thing. I was saving up for a lathe, and then all of a sudden, my buddy dropped this on my porch. He, hey Jake, you want a lathe? Brought it over, and I've been turning ever since. There's a lot of other machines in the shop, a lot of other stuff I used to do, but it all, it all went away when I started this. You hear people talk about it's a pigeonhole and, and you're gonna, once you start, that's all you're gonna do. It's, it's true, but you don't need a $3,000 lathe to do this. I got this for free and uh, this is a $400 lathe if you go buy it brand new. Uh, Har Harbor Freight has uh, coupons that they send to you through the mail or even at the store 25% off. So this is a $300 lathe and you can make cool stuff with it. I'll put a playlist of the things, all of my uh, turning videos up there. Um, this is super, super beginner friendly. It's simple to use, simple to operate and I'm going to go over everything with you. So this is a Harbor Freight T34706. Uh, that's the part number on it. The turning capacity is 12 inches. It has a three quarter horsepower motor. The time stamp, the date stamp on this thing is August of 2000. So it's a 20 year old, which that can mean just about anything. Who knows when it was sold. It's super easy to operate. You got the on off switch and your speed control here. Super easy. You just turn on your power and then you turn that to whatever uh, dial you want it to. Number one is 600, number 10 is 2400. So you just turn it on. It's that easy. Super simple to operate. So here's what you're gonna get when you get your lathe. It's gonna be, you have your tool rest, and then you have an extension for your tool rest. And I'll explain that in a minute. You have a knockout bar. I'll also explain that in a minute. You have a face plate. You attach, you attach your piece to this right here with screws. You have a spur center. That's gonna go into wood. That's going to go into wood like that. And then these are going to stab into that to hold it better. And then you're going to have a live center, which that this turns. So this one will stab into it and this one, this one will turn. The only thing that we're missing is the wrench for the, for the headstock. Um, I got this used, so that was the only thing that missing. That's pretty good. Now there's just a couple of things we need to know about this machine before we start buying accessories for it. This hole here and this hole in here are both tapered. These, these tools right here are tapered as you can see. And this is called a Morse 2 taper. This is the size of it, Morse 2, Morse 1 to be a different size. It fits in there and it wedges in, it wedges into there. So just like this drill chuck has the same, it's a more, when you go to order something like this, you got to have a Morse 2. Fits right in there. And now it's stuck already. The knockout bar we was talking about, this thingy right here, you stick it in the back of this headstock and you knock it out. And I'll give you a closer look at that here in a second. The other thing we need to know is these threads right here, the pitch and the size. So this is a one inch by eight TPI, eight threads per inch. So the bigger lathes have a one and a quarter inch and so you need to know the difference. This is the chuck, this is the easy chuck. Like I said, I was saving up money for a, uh, for a lathe, so I got a free lathe so I could afford to, to buy some nicer tools. So 
I uh, needed to know what size this was, so I had to buy this. There's two different sizes of these when you go to order them, and one inch by eight. And it's going to go right on there. So there you go. Just a couple of quick things you need to know. So I'm going to put this back in here and show you this knockout bar. So here's this knockout bar. It's pretty simple. But it's a pain if you don't have one, I promise. So you, st you stick it in here. This is hollow all the way through until this other side. So you just tap it and it comes right out. Any of these things, uh, they're all the same. Here's my spur center. I'm gonna put that in there and it comes right out. So this is looks simple, but you need it. So you can do 12 inch, uh, material you can make 12 inch things on here but if you have bigger stuff one of the features of this machine is this right here you loosen this up so we got that nice and loose there's a little knobby back here a little knob thing back here and you can turn it So now you can do much bigger things and then I'm going to show you that tool rest extension that I showed you earlier. I told you I explained it. Here we are. Here's your regular tool rest and 99.999% of the time it's going to be sitting over here and you're going to be cutting regularly. But you switch this thing over, now you need some way to come out here to uh, cut. So you're going to remove your tool rest. The, the head part of it. Put this in. And so there you go. So right here, if you have a bowl out here, then this, this gets your, your uh, tool rest out here far enough to where you can turn that bowl. I haven't done it much, but it is a feature of this, this uh, lathe, so keep that in mind now. Uh, I'm going to take this off of here and I'm going to put this back and then show you how to center it back up. Because this is a $300 lathe and it's not going to be as precise, so you kind of got to have some tricks to get this to line up just right. I'm going to go ahead and put my spur center in. And I'll put my live center in the back, in the tailstock. I'm going to do the opposite that I did earlier. We're going to turn this. And it definitely, it, there's a click to it, but as you can see, there's a little bit of wonkiness. So before I tighten that down, I'm going to move this up here. And lock it down. And I'm going to get this and I'm going to twist it till those things are just kissing. Tighten it down. It's all good. Let me loosen this up. Get this up there again. Make sure we're good. I don't know how good you can see that. That is pretty much perfectly lined up. And for a $300 lay, that's pretty good. Some of the problems that I've heard that these have is these, these uh, levers over here will strip out. I don't have that problem with mine. Braxton Worthen has a video, I'll put a link up there, of uh, fixing these. So um, I haven't had trouble out of mine, but that is a concern. I just, I'm overly cautious not to over tighten these things or put some Gorilla Grip on it. This, this here has one and that extender has one. You just got to watch out when you're tightening them. Don't get too crazy. I'm going to tell you the things that I don't like about it, but 
I'm not gonna beat it up too bad. It's a $300 lathe, but this one was for free, so I really can't complain about it. Thank you, David Burke, for giving this to me, by the way. Um, I'll put his Instagram below. This thing, the lowest speed is 600. So that it would be nice to go a little bit slower than that. And it'd be nice to go faster than 24. That being said, it's done everything that I wanted it to do. The biggest downfall to this lathe is, is super light. Um, I'm not a very big guy. It's, it's light. And I had one bowl that I didn't notice it while I was turning, but when I had fast motion, I'll put a link to the, up there at the ocean bowl. Uh, this thing was running around the shop. So that it's pretty much only two things I can think of. It's, it's light and I wish the, the uh, speed control was a little different on it. Other than that, I love it. I love using it. I've had people ask me, uh, Jake, you have some, some influence on YouTube, so why don't, you, why don't you have a better lathe? I was saving up for a lathe and I didn't, um, I didn't really know what to get. There's all kinds of nice lathes out there. But I got this and uh, it, it's making things just fine. So I like to show people, new people trying to get into it that you don't have to spend a ton of money to get into this stuff. This, this lathe, you can look at auctions. This one came from an auction and it, I think he gave like $65 for it. So if you're looking into getting into wood turning and you're really not sure if you wanna stick with it or not, this is not that bad of an investment. If you don't like it, you didn't spend two or three thousand dollars on a lathe this is something that will get the job done it'll get your feet wet and uh, for me <laughs> I enjoy it a ton and this is what I'm gonna be doing so um, I'll have the link some links below to some of the accessories I use like center finders and stuff like that that drill chuck go down there and check that out I'll have a playlist of all of the the things that I've turned on this and uh, don't be intimidated, get out there and uh, start turning stuff. Have some fun. Any questions, leave them in the comments below. Tell me hi, uh, if you're new to the channel, all that kind of stuff. And uh, y'all be good, we'll see you next time.